Hello, and this is chapter 9. In this chapter, we will learn how to use the embedded system for ROS. The embedded board that we are going to focus on is the OpenCR. And to use the OpenCR, or the other embedded board for ROS, we should know the ROS serial. After the talk, we will see the Totalbot 3 firmware, which is an example of embedded ROS. What do you think is the best processor unit for robot development? The CPU or the MCU? The robot on the right side is an 1.5 meter humanoid robot, the Thormag 3. It has an Intel NUC inside, processing power as similar as a PC but is smaller. The NUC is for processing the data of LiDAR. RGBD camera or RGB camera and it's for sending the data to a remote. But it has also the embedded systems attached in many parts of the robot. The reason why it uses two kinds of processor is very simple. The PC can do a various works, but the process they should deal with is very heavy. And the MCU based can do only a few designated works but works very quick. The x86 processor on the right side can be thought as the computer in your laptop. An ARM A class is a processor that is in almost all smartphones. These two are called SPC and the ROS are installable. On the other hand, the processors on the left side are the MCUs. They are used for real-time controls. These are so fast, but due to the lack of memories, they are not installable off ROS. Only what they can use is the firmware level. So then, what should we do to use the MCU system for ROS? ROS gives the answer, the ROS serial. The idea starts from thinking each embedded board as a ROS node. The ROS node which runs in the board and the other ROS nodes that are running in the PC will do ROS communication via USB. So the work of ROS serial is to convert the signals to enable the ROS communication. To make this happen, ROS serial server node should be run in the PC side. The ROS serial server converts the serial data. Then the raw serial client will be needed in the embedded board side. But the firmware that you will put into the board is the raw serial client. The concept is very simple. As long as the message that those have are the same, those can communicate. To use this, install the following ROS packages. There are three programming languages that are available for building the server part. And there are five kinds of ways to program the client part. This chapter will focus on using raw serial Python for the server and the raw serial Arduino for the client. Raw serial has a serial packet protocol and its structure is very similar to what the other common packet protocol have. The header of the packet, this even starts with FF of hexadecimal, very similar. This is called in the raw serial, the sync flag. The protocol version, this was a little bit changed. The turning point was the raw groovy. The message length and the figures of checksum are very common in the packet structure. Topic ID is necessary for every ROS communications. And the message contains the data, like sensor data. But the ROS serial also has some limitations on having perfect ROS communication. First, MCU level boards doesn't have enough memory. So the number of publishers and subscribers 
and even the buffer size should be fixed. Second issue is come from float 64. Most of all, MCU doesn't support 64 bit real number calculation. So, if a node is going to set 64 bit data to the board, it will be converted to 32 bit. Third is a string. Because of the shortage of the memory, it should allocate specific size of memory and put all characters from the string. The fourth is an array. But the reason is the same, the lack of memory. Fifth is the communication speed. If you are going to set the communication speed other than 115,000 BPS, you are to can't bear the speed. The next we are going to look into is the OpenCR. This is an embedded controller board and it's made for ROS, but its software and hardware sources are fully opened online. This board is used in the Total 3, the official ROS standard robot platform, and the OP3, which is a small size humanoid robot. The board was developed by Robotis OSRF or now it's called Open Robotics and the OROCA, the Open Robotics Community Association based on Korea. The specifications are as follows. The feature of this board is that the shortages of the boards that I talked in previous page was almost solved. This board uses 32-bit ARM Cortex-M7, which is in the highest rank of processing power and the memory in the MCU field. So the limitation of the number of publish, subscribe, and the buffer size was much expanded. The Flow 64 is supported on this board also, so it doesn't need to convert the Flow 64 to 32. And another powerful feature is that it supports various voltage output. It can provide enough energy for sensors and computers. And it has same pin settings of GPIO as the Arduino has. So you can put some add-on boards onto the OpenCR. It works also in Arduino IDE, so the examples of the additional boards is able to be used. The IMU sensor is attached on the middle of the board. The voltage measuring circuit for safety is also included on the board. Various communications are supported, like USB, SPI, I2C, TTL, RS-45, and CAN. In the block diagram, the part above is related with the power supplement. The part of the bottom is for the extensions. The picture on the right side is the flash memory map. The links will show you how to install the IDE and what is board manager, how to set up the library for OpenCR, and also how to upload the firmware into the OpenCR. Next page supposes that you've installed these already. So from now, I will show you an example that controls 4 LED lights on the board. The first is open the Arduino. And load the source code for a 4 LED control on Arduino platform. Like this. And upload this to the OpenCR board. This takes a few seconds. Now we will run the ROS serial to make ROS connection between the computer and the board. Here you can see that the subscriber on the topic LED out is set. Now let's publish the data to LED out topic. The data will be sent as the format standard message byte 
describes and the value is 1. Enter and you will see the LD is lit. Now publish the value 2 as well and you will see the LD number 2 is lit. You can check whether the message is sent or not by monitoring via Rust topic stops. Now set the echo. and publish a new number, 8. This will light a fourth LD. And 3 for first and second LD. Let's see the node connections via R2T graph. So here's the OpenCR. This is running by Rust Serial. A node name was set by the command here. Then let's see the codes. You will notice that the codes are very similar to the source codes that were built within the chapter 7. The code keeps its structure as an Arduino code but the functions are used as Rust CPP example used. It has subscriber and it calls the callback function which is the same as the Rust CPP. It includes messages which was also done in the Rust CPP example. And digital write function and pin mode function is the Arduino functions. You can use the OpenCR as typical Arduino board. You can do as what you did in the LD example. Load the source. And upload to the board. Then run the Rust serial. And check the Rust topic list. Now we can see that IMU data and transform is being published. Let's see the IMU data. And one more thing, this data can be visualized in Arvis. After some settings, this data can be visualized in Arvis. This arrow shows the IMU data. The arrow heads to where the board heads. Now let's see the node connection. So here is the OpenCR. And it publishes two topics. And those data are subscribed to the Arvis. Totalbot 3 Burger uses the raw serial too. When you run the board, it runs as the node Totalbot 3 core. The node receives command velocity, which contains linear velocity and angular velocity. Then publishes the topic messages shown in the right side of the node graph. 
there are many sensors controlled by the OpenCR. OpenCR acts like the node and publishes all the data get from the sensors. Embedded boards with ROS let us make the robot very easily and efficiently.